Hey, it's Craig from TC Helicon. Today I'm going to do a bit of a companion piece to our Looper Closer Look video that we put out a little while ago. Now that video really went over the performance aspects of the Looper and kind of dissected how Tom built his NAM demo that we had put in another video. So it was kind of a cool way to do a bit of a play-by-play. The one thing that was missing from that video was a bit of a closer explanation about how the looper itself actually works. And that's something I'm going to go over with you guys now. I think it's important for me to kind of cover these initial little bits of how the looper goes together and what the functionality is. So you press and hold the uh, layer button to get into the looper. So if, uh, if I was on the you know vocal layer here, press and hold the loop layer or the layer button to get into the looper here, you're presented with a new screen. So you've got record A, record B, you see util, which stands for utility, and you see met, which stands for metronome. You also see these three lines up here that say empty, empty, empty. Well, those are your three looping tracks. Now, you have access to the three tracks, and they can play, be played in a couple of different combinations. You can play any loop individually, any track individually, or you can play track A with track B, or track A with track C. You can't play track B and C together, or you can't play A, B, and C all at the same time, just so you know how the system works. When you first start recording a loop, example here, I've just started recording on track A by pressing the Harmony Drive button, which is related to this segment of the screen. As soon as you start recording, you see a couple of different things. You see the amount of time you have remaining, 470, 68, 67 seconds going on here. And you have these three uh, different segments of the screen that have now changed to give me some new options. The new options are set and stop, set and overdub, and set and play. Now what that means is, and they're, they're fairly self-explanatory, but you've got set, which means stop the recording that I'm doing. So I'm now at the end of the loop that I wanted to make, and I want to lock that in. And now I'd like to either immediately play it back, set and play, immediately start recording an overdub right onto that same recording, which is set and overdub, or set it, close, close the loop, finish it up, but don't play it back. Just stop it and hold on to it in the background. Now in this case, I'm going to do that because it's probably picking up some stuff through my mics and you'll just hear me talking back at you through the loop if I play or I overdub. So I'm going to stop it. And now you'll see where it used to say record A and you had a blank box next to it, kind of like B does right here. Now it says overdub on A or play A. So this button in the middle, the double button, becomes your play and your stop command. You can play it, you can stop it and it becomes your overdub command. I can record something over top of it and I can end the overdub. Now you'll actually see that when I ended the overdub, track A here kept playing. And that's because you can overdub in small little segments. You can overdub a little chunk. And you imagine you know, you've got the whole loop. Well, I just want to come in here and I want to record something. Then I want to come in there and record something else. So you don't have to press overdub and then wait you know, okay, my part's coming up, because you're going to be maybe getting some, some sounds in through your guitar or your, your mic or anything thing like that. You don't want those to be in there. So you can kind of just, uh, for a recording studio uh, term, you can kind of punch in and punch out whenever you want to with the, uh, the overdubbing there. The overdub button actually also becomes your erase button for that track. If you press and hold the overdub button, you can erase. And there it is. It's gone, and now I'm back to that original state. Record A, record B. They're both sitting there. I can do the same thing on B. I record and I get the same three options. Now set and stop still down in the same place because we've got this swap thing and that's uh, the beast we'll, we'll try and slay in a minute. But we've got set and overdub, set and play, same thing. I'm going to do set and stop on this one and then I'm going to delete that, that layer by pressing and holding the uh, overdub B button. Now that's related to track B obviously. So now I'm sitting here, I'm going, okay, I've got these, these couple of tracks. Well, how do I ever get to track C? I don't understand. I recorded something on track A. It's playing back. I've recorded something on track B. It's playing back. They're kind of lined up together. They're doing their thing. Now you'll see that the swap button has shown up. When I press swap, it will immediately start recording on track C. Press swap and you'll see the timer starts counting down. I get presented with set and play, set and overdub, set and stop. I'm going to do set and stop. And then I'm going to stop A as well. And now I have, as you can see, these little highlights here. Those are the tracks that I have selected. So if I say all start, which is a new command that's down here now, A and C will start playing at the same time. I could just play A, or I could just play C, play and stop. Or I can start them all at the same time, stop them all at the same time. I can start them at the same time, but stop C when I want to. And vice versa, I could start them at the same time and stop B when I want to. Now I could delete these layers if I wanted to by pressing and holding, or I could go into the utility menu, and we'll cover that in a sec. The other thing I want to do here though is, well, what if I want to play track B? See, now I only have access to track C. What's going on? You can actually press and hold the utility menu here. Press and hold it, and it'll swap. Now you'll notice this little icon here goes from B to C. 
which means I have access to play C or I have access to play B. So that gives you control over which layer is going to, which track is going to be played either alongside A or just by itself. So let's delete these. I'm going to delete B, I'm going to delete A, I'm going to swap to C by pressing and holding again. Now you see I've got highlighted C and now I have those same options. I can delete C. Now I've got nothing, nothing recorded in there. Now that we're back to sort of square one, let's actually talk about the utility menu because in there are the sync modes and I really want to talk to you about how those things work because they can be a little bit confusing. So press utility. We can talk about input. Input's fairly straightforward. You're choosing what the inputs are for the looper. Vocal and guitar, guitar, auxiliary, vocal, and all. Pretty straightforward on there. I won't spend too much time there. Let's go to sync. So you go into the sync menu and now you're faced with free, quantize, serial, and smart. Free is the easiest one to describe. Imagine three tape decks, and you're trying to make them play at the same time by pushing the buttons at the same time. Without some sort of computer controller to do it, it becomes very difficult. Free mode just means they're just playing back freewheeling. There is no sync. The computer, the, 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 the system itself is not trying to help you at all to keep those things lined up. They might seem lined up for a while, kind of bouncing on the beat. What happens is you get that, uh, it's kind of akin to sitting at a traffic light and you notice that your turn signal is clicking at exactly the same time as the guy in front of you. But then after a, a minute, you know, they start going off a bit and then all of a sudden they're going opposite and then it takes them a second and then they start coming back and they bounce together again. Y you can get that kind of thing a lot when you're in free mode. So what we recommend with free is that you kind of have one main loop that's your main loop and then treat B or C as like if you're doing something sort of ethereal or atmospheric that doesn't really matter if it rolls around at exactly the same time. You can use free mode for that kind of thing. Otherwise, you would have to be inhumanly good at pressing the buttons in order to make sure that free lines up and that everything plays perfectly. I've never seen anyone come close, but if you can do it, send us in a video. I would love to see it. All right, let's talk about quantize. Quantize works from beats. So it counts the number of beats using the metronome in the recording that you've made. Could have eight beats, could have 16, could have 31 beats. It will count that number of beats and it will make your button presses try and be as close to a beat as possible so that when you press the button, if you're really close to beat three, it's gonna scoot the recording, make it a little longer, a little shorter, depending on if you were really close to, to be there, or to, to the beat three, sorry. Um, similarly with the loops, it will try and keep the beats lined up. It doesn't keep the loop positions lined up, and I think that's something to, to be clear about there. If I have loop A playing, and it's eight beats long, and I start playing loop B partway through, it's just gonna start loop B from the beginning of loop B, lined up perfectly to whatever the beat is in, in loop A. And it's not gonna start loop B partway through to kind of put it in exactly the same place. Smart mode does do that, but quantize doesn't. I find quantize is really good for things like, you know, I want to record a long loop A and then I just want to do like a small beatbox on loop B and I want it to just keep going around and around and around. Quantize works really well for that kind of thing. It works really well for if you've got uh, even, even length parts as well. You can have your track A be shorter than your track B. Doesn't matter at all. It's just going to basically repeat track A the number of times that it needs to repeat it in order to line up with the number of beats in track B, similarly with track C. Um, smart mode is a bit different. Smart mode tries to extend or fill in gaps for you to make your loops more the same length and then to also line up the positions of them better. So it's, uh, it's the kind of thing where the, the, the loops will play at the same time in the same location each time. And I'll do a little example here of the smart mode one because the box ships in smart mode so that's a good one to do. I'm going to just erase things here. If I record track A here. I'm going to do just some counting and I'm going to turn on the metronome just so I can hear it. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, now if three, I just four, want to record five, six, seven, hey part one, way through two, three, and I want that four, to line up five, six, I'll seven, do it on track eight. B. Ready? One, two, three, four, hey! Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, hey! Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, hey. five. So you see how those keep their position relative to each other, and it also helped me to make sure that those loops were exactly the same length. I'm going to delete that track B real quick, and I'm going to go back and change the sync mode to quantize. And I'm going to press re the record button at exactly the same time to let you hear the difference of how it works. You're actually going to get, hey, 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 hey. So hopefully that'll be kind of clear. 
One, two, three, four. Hey, 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 hey. So you can see how they actually line up timing-wise, but they don't stretch the. It doesn't doesn't put blank space into that loop to ensure that those things line up perfectly. That is the main difference between smart and quantize. And they each absolutely have their function depending on how you want to make your loop, but it's really good to be aware of that that's the way that they work. The same thing happens between B and C and A and B and all those combinations of how you can play them together. The other mode in the sync menu is serial. So let's go down to sync here, choose serial. That allows me to play the various loops back to back to back and cue them up to happen one after the other. So I record something on track A, set and play it, record something on track B. Now let's see, it's recording on track B. And now you can see it's just playing track B over and over and over and over again here. If I press play on A, it's gonna go cued. And as soon as B finished, it starts playing A. So you can see it playing A like this. Anytime while, while A is playing, if I go play B, it's gonna cue it and then it's gonna play B. If I record something on C, so I'll swap, record something on C, here we go, it's recording on C, do a few seconds here so it's a little bit easier to see, set and play. Now I've got my C loop. If I play A, it cues up, gets to the end of C, plays loop A, and it just keeps playing it, and playing it, and playing it. I go to play C again, goes right in a row. If I go swap, it's gonna queue up B from C. So how do I go A, B, C? That's probably the, the, the best uh, um, example of it because you might be going you know, verse, chorus, bridge or something like that. I'm gonna play A, it's gonna start running through. We're then gonna play B, cue it up, B starts playing, we hit swap, swap stops to C, cues that up and starts playing C and part anywhere through C here, I press play on A again and it cues up A and starts playing that again. Uh, I know that's a little bit quick um, to sort of show how it works. I'm just gonna erase these here. That gives you a good example of how you can queue up A, then B, then C, or A, then C, then A, then B, or the B, then C, and then C, then B, back and forth. And it's always gonna say queued as it waits for the current loop to finish and the next loop to start. You could even be fancy with it and you rec could record a backing track into A, B, and C. You know, a whole four minute long backing track or whatever into, that, into that, those particular tracks. And when you're ready to play your next song live, you could just hit play B, and it's gonna be finishing up your first track, and then it's just gonna immediately start playing your next track right afterwards. So it's a really slick way of being able to go amongst tracks like that. That kind of covers the sync modes. Hopefully you'll experiment a little bit yourselves just to kind of figure out how those things interact. There are definitely some, some uh, little idiosyncrasies that you need to figure out which one you wanna to use to get the maximum result for that particular performance you're doing. Back in the utility menu here, there's a couple of other uh, things you can get at. We've got the metronome menu. That's accessible via the utility menu or just from the top level if you don't have uh, other things recorded in here. Um, met becomes all start, all stop if you've got a couple of tracks recorded. So metronome, on the top level, I can press and hold it to start to turn the metronome on, press and hold it to turn the metronome off. I can, and now this, sorry, uh, I said off, I really meant mute. It's still going, you can see the light here is still flashing. It's actually still slaving to the metronome, everything's working, I just can't hear it. I can tap to change the metronome tap tempo and it turns on the metronome automatically. Press and hold it again to turn it off. I can tap the metronome button to get into the menu. Now I have met off, which means no metronome at all. It's essentially kind of like being in free mode. Um, in smart mode, you, you can rely on the metronome a lot less. Smart mode will look at the lengths of those loops and try and you know do that extending stuff I was talking about, recording silence and those kinds of things. In quantize mode, you're likely not gonna to wanna to use it with no metronome because it's saying, well, quantize to what? I have no idea what I'm supposed to quantize to because there's no beats there. Uh, so that's a really good example of when you'd wanna make sure you use the metronome in some way or another. Uh, within the menu here, you can choose the sound of the menu or of the uh, metronome. I could change it to a tambourine. I could change it to a shaker, cowbell, more cowbell, stick, kick drum. I tend to, typically stick with kick drum. Now, if you don't want to hear the metronome, 
you can mute it and like I said that's still working in the background to keep everything lined up it's just not audible there's also some controls for you to be able to have the metronome in your earphones and not go out to the the audience and that's also a great way you know you can kind of be the click for the band um, or you could even split that headphone output and you could have somebody else listen to the click as well as yourself if you wanted to uh, to have a whole bunch of people listening to the click let's go back to the top level here in the util menu again I've got a couple of more things I can do I've got the erase menu gives me direct access to erase any one of those loops that I want to, A, B, or C, or just erase all by pressing one button. Um, what else have I got in here? This is where we manage our slots in the, in the utility menu, and this is how we save. So use the preset up and down buttons to change slots. It's gonna say okay to lose changes. I'm just gonna say yes for now. Um, it's just saying that I had changed some things, whether or not I had changed something about the metronome, the sounds, the inputs. It does keep track of all that kind of stuff so that if you want to, to come to a loop um, even if it's empty, but have certain settings set up, you can use a slot for that and save those settings to the slot. It's kind of handy for, uh, for when you want to recall something specific about the way you want to make a loop. I can change slots up to slots 1 to 10. And now you can see, actually, sort of make myself look good here like I meant to do it. Slot 1 has the, uh, the sync set to serial. Slot 2 is set to smart. And slot three is set to free. So you can see these little indicators on the screen are actually showing you what the settings are. You've got your input as well and the beats per minute that's going. Uh, I'll see if these are changing their BPM as well. It may not be. No, they're all staying at 114. This is where I would save. Just press save. It's going to say no changes because I haven't changed anything. But if I were to record something, let's record anything I want. Boom, set and stop. Back in here, I press save. It says storing does the store thing and it's done. Now it means that that loop slot now has that loop and all the settings saved in that position. Uh, you could button map direct access to that loop from the button map screen, which is kind of cool as well. So you would, uh, we'll, we'll do a quick example here. Go into the vocal layer, for example, and say I want to map that loop that I just made. So I think that was slot C track A. Got to remember what that is. I go to the button mapper and I could say make the micro mod button. I go all the way over to loop trigger and I would choose slot three track A, back out here. Now you can see if I go to the vocal level, I've got slot three track A and I could just literally trigger it from the top level and it'll start playing when I want. Good way to connect a backing track to a preset, uh, a tra you know, a particular loop that you had something in the background you wanted to fire off whenever you want, you can do that by assigning it to the preset that way. So there's a little bit of an in-depth view of the looper. I'm sure there's a lot of other little things in there that, uh, that we could go totally off the cliff with, but I think this gives a good example. And really, like I said before, the thing I'd encourage you to do the most is play around with the different sync modes, especially quantize and smart, and get to learn how those ones work. If you're somebody who doesn't want to listen to a metronome, but you kind of want things to line up, smart's probably the way to go. If you're the person who wants to listen to the, the beat or even incorporate the metronome kick drum into your loops, quantize is probably a good way to go for you. Uh, and it allows you to do the sort of the smaller loops that kind of repeat really quickly and that kind of stuff. Hope you enjoyed the, the little demo here. Um, I didn't want to bore you with building up a whole bunch of loops and trying to actually show how the performance aspect worked. Just wanted to dive in and push some buttons for you. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me, and we'll be back with more Voice Life 3 videos as we move forward here. Take care.